If you're learning to paint pets in watercolor, you have probably already encountered a broad spectrum of breeds, fur texture, facial features, and of course, colors. So maybe you have a friend who asked you to paint a portrait of her dog or cat and gave you a few photos to paint from, and now you're looking at your palette and you're wondering, what colors do I use? Well, the good news is learning to choose colors with confidence can be easily learned. Here are my top five tips for choosing the perfect colors for your pet portraits. And if you want to dive even deeper into this topic, download my free PDF guide in the description below, which has more examples of pet photos side by side with color swatches so you can see just how easy it is to choose colors for your pet portraits. My first tip is to keep it simple. You'll almost always need to have some version of the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow on your palette for painting any pet portrait or anything really. And since most animal fur is just a version of white, black, brown, gray, or tan, you really just need to find four or five colors that can be mixed and adjusted to achieve any of those colors. For my palette, I've learned through practice and experience that I can paint just about any pet portrait using only these five colors, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and indigo. All of these dilute beautifully for the lighter values in a pet portrait, and when combined, they can create many beautiful browns, champagne tones, tans, or grays. Indigo is my go-to color for the darkest values and details like the eyes and the nose, and when mixed with burnt sienna, it creates a lovely black. A great substitute for indigo is Payne's Gray. These are not the only colors that you need to paint pets. If you guys have totally different brands, use what you have. My second tip is to create a color mixing chart. In order to see what is possible when you mix all of your colors, creating a color mixing chart can be invaluable when it comes to understanding the possibilities and the varieties of combos that are available to you. I recommend creating a chart that combines just two at a time, one side of the chart full strength or the darkest value possible, and the other side lighter and more diluted with water. My third tip is to practice with your colors. I recommend sticking with the same colors for at least a year so you can really get comfortable and confident mixing those colors before trying to introduce new colors to your repertoire. Those five colors I mentioned at the beginning have helped create dozens of pet portraits and I never have to feel anxiety about choosing colors for a portrait because I've painted with those exact colors for years now. So if you're practicing with your colors, you can begin to easily predict what will happen when you mix them together at different ratios and with varying amounts of water. There simply is no substitute for practice. My fourth tip is to do thumbnail sketches with your paints before diving into your pet portrait. It's a good idea to swatch your colors that you think you want to use and then create a small test painting of the portrait to see if those colors really will work. Sometimes combinations you thought would look really great end up being too blue or too red or too something. You can save yourself a lot of time by doing quick watercolor sketches on cheap paper first. This is also a great way to test out your overall design and composition, play with background colors, or experiment with changes you might want to make from your reference photo. My last tip is to try to describe the color you're seeing. When you're studying your reference photo, just ask yourself what color you're seeing. It helps to be able to compare the color to a different object. For example, this brown looks like milk chocolate, or this gray is kind of bluish like a dolphin's skin, or this is a yellowish brown like desert sand. Ask yourself, do I need to add more red, more yellow, or more blue? Does it need to be darker with more pigment and less water, or lighter, more diluted? Now, what do you do if the colors in the photo simply can't be mixed with your four or five staples? In rare cases, you'll have a photo with unusual lighting. For example, the shadow tones on the white fur of this beagle are picking up some of the greens from the background, creating a really cool blue shadow. I think my ultramarine would be the wrong blue for this. Or in this photo, the nose and eyes have more pink tones in them, so burnt sienna won't quite cut it. In those rare cases where the colors just don't match, you will need to find different paint colors. For the beagle, I would use a cool blue, like turquoise blue or something that's a little more greenish for those shadows. And for the pink tones in this pup, instead of using my usual burnt sienna, I could use alizarin crimson or I could use a more true red like Scarlet Lake. In combination with testing out your mixes and practicing often with a simple, limited palette, taking this objective approach is guaranteed to help you master your pet portrait color choices. If you want to know more about painting white pets or black pets, check out these videos for more in-depth tips and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.